How would you like to get 138% better results from doing the same thing? If you compare the results of doing any exercise, whether it's balance or strength training or core, as we're going to demonstrate today, on a whole body vibration platform like the power plate move I'm going to demonstrate on versus on the floor, you can increase muscle recruitment by 138%. You can also increase the benefit to your bone density. You can increase and enhance your balance as well as lymphatic flow and circulation and the reduction of cellulite. So we'll go into some of those, but primarily I want to show you my core exercise session. So I'm going to do nine minutes with variations on the plank and we'll do front, we'll do side, we'll do bridges and a number of other things and variations that you can do right along with me on the floor. You don't need to have a power plate. So stay with me, do these quickly. And I absolutely said nine minutes. That's including shifting positions. So this doesn't have to be intense. Nobody needs an hour long core session. And most days you don't even need nine minutes, but I guarantee you, you will feel a difference. And if you're holding on hands, you can't go to your palms, Hold on your forearms to keep the stress off of your elbows, wrists, or shoulders, and to keep it minimal. Here we go. So we start here turning on the power plate. It's a plank, that so yes, and the dog is optional, but you can see where it actually becomes quite functional as you watch the dog or your cat, whatever it might be, or a child coming underneath you. Now, I'm up on my palms, Notice my elbows are slightly bent, not locked. That's an important detail. But there's a little more stress on the wrist and a little more stress on the elbows here. So if you need to, you can come down two forearms and not have to put all of that weight up. While you are elevated, as opposed to being down on the floor, there is also a little less stress on the wrist, elbows, and shoulders in this case. However, you're still winning with the advantage if you are on power plate, you're getting the advantage of getting a little bit more stimulation through the muscle. Notice I am pushing back through my heels. That's also a very important detail. Next. All right. So I'm going to change coming over into a side plank. So on the elbow or the forearm, I'm going to take a top leg. We call that a gesture leg. I could also be doing knees in toward my chest, but that leg is optional. When you're on the power plate, you already have a little bit of vibration, so it is a little bit more challenging. And it's challenging to have that pet down there as well. So know yourself. If your balance is good, that's probably an okay thing. It's actually distracting you. Your balance is challenged. That's the whole idea. However, if it puts you at risk, make sure you're making wise decisions, whether you're on the floor or you're on a power plate. Important. Notice my legs. Here I'm adding the knee. And instead of scissoring my feet, staggering one in front of the other, I'm stacking them up. Now the dog thinks this is hilarious, but I don't. <laughs> Just saying. Taking the arm down as opposed to up also changes the work. Now I'm coming back to a front plank. So again, taking a little break as opposed to holding two minutes in a row of front plank actually gives you a little refresh for the lower back. So it's a little less stressful. You're less likely to fall apart, but you are still getting those two minutes of plank. So still very valuable. But I am on my forearms here. So for those of you that needed to be earlier, perfectly okay for you to do it here too. So again, look at the line between my ankles, hips, and top of the head. Importantly, that's a straight line. Now I'm going to add a gesture leg in the back. As you start moving limbs, either arms or in this case legs, you start challenging your core a little more. So we're still really trying to stabilize between the hips and the head and do so while you've got movement in the legs. This is exactly very sport specific or daily activity specific. Changing things up pretty dramatically into a bridge. 
So I love a bridge and you may think of it as a glute exercise, which it is. However, your core is really also everything between your knees and your shoulders. So even if you're on the floor, no power plate in sight and you're doing a bridge and you're doing walking is another way to bump up the intensity of it. You're doing significant core exercise and that means the work through the core, front of your belly, back along the spine, as well as the glutes, hamstrings, all of it that keeps you steady, stable when you're doing any activities of daily life or sports and exercise activities. So again, keeping it walking, I will share with you another time, but there is another entire study on using this exercise to stimulate the glutes on power plate significantly increases the stimulation of the hamstrings, an important piece in maintaining knee health. Coming up and down in a bridge, literally, so now not moving the feet, but just through the core, getting hip extension. So we're again targeting glutes, hamstrings to some extent, and as we do that, again, remember, Everything between your shoulders and your knees functions together in an integrated way. And so this is core. And again, the dog is optional. Flipping. So again, to refresh, about a minute of each of these is all you're going to do. Coming into a balance exercise. Now, if you are someone who does Pilates, you know this potentially as a teaser position. It's also called a V-sit, more traditionally in strength training exercises. So essentially, I'm balancing kind of on the bum and leaning back about 45 degrees, leaning the legs 45 degrees, either with the knees bent or with the legs fully extended, holding this position. If you have a lower back issue, you may find that this exercise is not comfortable for you, so don't force yourself or try to muscle through something that's causing any discomfort or pain. Just leave this one out. There are plenty of other exercises that you can do. But this is simply a hold. It again is really stabilization, but look at all the balance that you have going on while you're doing it. You'll see another one like this at the very end, so stick around here. Good, and carefully swinging yourself off, shifting gears, now going into prone extension. That means belly down and a little bit of hyper extension. So if you think of the base of the power plate, or if you're on the floor, you're also doing this as the flat, the, the base, the stability. What I'm doing is raising the legs up off of that, raising the arms, either up reaching back or even with my shoulders or up and overhead. All of those are potential places where now with the arms up, for instance, I'm increasing the work. So the workload coming from my core and lower back is much greater as my arms are up. Now I've got a puppy here playing with my arms. This again, also a great way to add difficulty, not necessarily on purpose, but it does have its place. Never ever do we fall. Do we really need the balance and reaction skills in a really cool, quiet place. We are typically going through distractions. So having those things, even with a partner, not necessarily a puppy, helpful. On all fours, if you're able to be on your knees, not everybody is, this is the bird dog. So you can do one leg, one leg, the opposite arm and leg if you're able to do that. Now, when you're on the floor, you may be able to do, say, right arm, left leg. However, when you're up on the power plate, it's a little bit more challenging. So as much as I've been doing bird dog, opposite arm and leg for decades, coming to the power plate changes the game. It's a little bit more difficult. So keep this slow and controlled. When you're ready, try opposite arm and leg. And until you have a really solid balance, leave this one out. You may want to pad your knees if you have any issues with being on your kneecaps like this. 
especially this one. Now, this is the last one. I mentioned we were coming to this one, so this is kneeling, but the goal here is from behind me, I am actually lightly lifting my feet up, not necessarily having my shins all the way down. That's going to increase the balance challenge. Whenever you're balancing, you are lifting your core or working your core a little bit more. You can do this one also on the ground. So just on the floor, on a padded surface for knees, you can try this one. And it is you trying lifting your feet off the floor and just balancing on the knees, you will feel a greater degree of work. This one, again, if you have knee trouble, you might want to leave it out. You don't necessarily have to do all of them. There is a great variety here. There you have it. Easy, quick workout. And remember, you know, I may be holding each one of those close to a minute. I'm just watching that timer, holding each for about a minute and then switching. If you can't hold up to a minute, you hold each one for as long as you can and then rest, wait for the next one. And again, dive into that, hold it for as long as you can and then again, rest. So that is working up to doing them really well. Here's the important thing when it comes to core or any exercise. We only want to train the good ones. We only want to train the ones we do with good form. So don't punish yourself, push yourself through, try to hold it. If you know you've really lost form, let it go because we don't want to reinforce bad posture, bad habits, or bad poses. Think about your benefits. Bone density, muscle, reduction of cellulite, improving your balance, increasing circulation, even on days when you don't want to do a full workout by even standing next to a power plate. So I'm going to take my shoe off, put my foot here. I could sit down in this chair and just get circulation going in, in my lower leg and in my foot, standing all day, wearing an uncomfortable pair of shoes all day. This is still a benefit, even if you have somebody in your home who's got limited range of motion, limited ability for movement, but we're working on how we can increase their movement and or improve their circulation and decrease leg pain. It's also optimal for that. We have exercises and stretches we do with athletes. So imagine lying on the floor, draping your calves over the power plate turning it on on a low mode. You're increasing the circulation to your calves. So again, anyone with night pain, leg cramps, who at the end of the day just feels a lot of fatigue and or someone who does a lot of hiking, a lot of exercise and actually needs some enhanced recovery, the power plate or whole body vibration apparatuses are extremely supportive for improving the circulation and getting that lymph flowing. If you're curious about it right now, you can go to flipping50.com forward slash power plate to learn more and use flipping50, flipping50, the coupon code to get a 20% discount. If you're coming at the right time of year, there may be an even better deal for only our community. DM me, ask me questions below. I've been using mine for about five months, almost every single day. I'm about to do my next bone density test after having used it for a little over seven months and I'll keep you posted on the results. But I needed a little improvement. So my left forearm, my non-dominant arm was a little bit lighter and showing a little bit of osteopenia. So yes, even somebody who's extremely active, who's lifted heavy weights for a majority of her life, you know, it's not just all that. Some of it is based on what we've been eating, what we've been absorbing, because gut health can be a big factor, and the overall size. So larger size people tend to have fewer issues with bone density, but it all depends on what have been your over-the-counter medications, what have your prescription drugs been. Have you been on something that you needed to be on that was life-saving and yet may have prevented you from absorbing the vitamins and minerals you needed for bones. Sometimes we have to make those kinds of choices, but you always want to know getting a snapshot tells you how you are. The one thing we know now in 2024 is osteopenia and osteoporosis are nothing to be afraid of. 
No one should be telling you, you absolutely can't do that unless you've absolutely been told you are super fragile, super frail, and you've had fractures already that does lend to the fact that you are more prone to fracture. Exercising on the power plate using cold body vibration is one way to very safely enhance your bone density without risky movement. Let me know if you have more questions.